Good morning, good afternoon, and you're welcome to the channel. I hope you are doing very well wherever you are watching me from. I just want to thank you so much for your support and everything. I also want to remind you that our Black Social Distance event will be coming off tomorrow, Thursday at 5 p.m. UTC on this very channel. So what is the Black Social Distance? You know, for some time now, we've been discussing Africans and African-American relationship, all right? And we are trying to work out a way that we can engage in, in a meaningful conversation to bridge the gap, all right? Not all of us can just go out there to interview or to, I mean, bring us together, I mean, directly. We, some of us need to sit behind cameras, all right, to bring some important conversations to bear. And that's what we've been able to do. I was so much excited where my expectation was exceeded. I was expecting one or two, three people, I mean, to sign up for this kind of conversation but to my surprise i've got some i mean a lot of people right that i don't even know how to fix them in the event so this is what i've decided instead of this black social distance event being a one-off event i've decided to make it continuous so so tomorrow we'll be having african-american we'll be having african kenyan and we'll be having african nigerian all right right there on the channel to talk about our relationships our differences i mean to have a meaningful conversation something you don't want to miss it all right so tomorrow 5 p.m you UTC, make sure that you just stick around because we are doing this with you. It's going to be a live event, so we need your uh, involvement, we need your participation, we need your um, contribution, we need your question. We don't want you to make it boring, we want you to make it like a, like a forum, more conversational. I mean, you know what I mean, right? So, thanks and please subscribe to the channel. That being said, let's get right on, on today's topic, all right? So, what are we come to talk about today? Whenever I hear comments like Africans should go back to their country, they, they are fleeing to America, they are fleeing to some places, I sometimes personally get hurt, all right? Because I know what we are capable of. I know that when black people, when Africans are given the chance to excel, we can do well. If you think I'm lying, just look around you. I don't know where you are. You can be in America, Europe and all that and see how Africans have been able to uh, make huge impacts that Africans have been able to find themselves in every corner of the industry making huge gains and making huge impacts and proving that if the chance were in Africa, if the, the same opportunities were to be in Africa, Africa could have been a powerhouse to be reckoned with, all right? This video you're about to watch, all right, is a typical example of my assertion, of what I'm saying now, all right? A couple of years ago, the government of Ghana brought this initiative what we call the indigenous or indigenization uh, policy where the government was intending to i mean sway a lot of uh, labor or especially highly skilled labor from expatriate to Ghanaians, all right from energy industry uh, mining i mean a lot it was it was been an agenda for the successive government for quite a long time and one of the areas that we have chopped huge success is our energy sector I want you to watch this video, then after we can continue with this very commentary. It is an exciting one. The first is indigenization. Indigenization essentially using local intellectual capital to run your business. The mere fact that we've been able to reliably provide gas, deliver gas, someone supplies the commodity, but we deliver it. So we don't talk about them so that much. Then I will take you on a short journey, the energy transition journey that globally we are all talking about. And then we talk about CSR projects. Those will be the stories that I'll be sharing with you. Let's talk about indigenization. So Ghana Gas, um, after incorporation in July of 2011, we went through a period of construction of the infrastructure. At the end of November, our, no, I would say the middle of November, we had finished what we call mechanical completion. Mechanical completion means we put all the bullets and nuts together. Everything seems to. That was in November of 2014. Then we went through a period of commissioning. It took about six months. So by the end of April 2015, the plant was fully commissioned and the pipelines attendant to the plant also were. 
all this time, the plant was being operated by Chinese. We love the Chinese, but we didn't want to stay with them for too long. Now, indigenous Ghanaian engineers and technicians took over the operation of this plant. Now, I say this not in jest, but not serious. It's nice. I've, I've actually worked in this industry for 31 years, and, and both Canada and the US and a host of other countries. This is the first time that I've seen a turnaround. In other words, having foreign operators see operatorship to indigenous engineers and technicians in the shortest time, three years. And this was March of 2017. That all done, all those who were operating our plants and pipelines, those in the control rooms, operating floors, our storage facility areas, all Ghanaians. In comparison, or to put it in context, it took our friends in Trinidad and Tobago 40 years to fully seed or assume operatorship of their infrastructure in Trinidad, Point Lisas, Nigeria, our neighbors. It took them 50 years. It took our Ghanaian young engineers, men and women, technicians, three years. Whilst we are at it, we're saving $3 million a month, because that's about how much we're paying the, the Chinese to operate it for us. Now, it was difficult, and, and I tell you, we love the Chinese, but even the operating manuals were in Chinese, so all you have to do is just sit and just look at them. It was a very difficult experience. Nevertheless, we learned something enough and we trained ourselves enough to be able to take over. Three million dollars a month savings. That wasn't all. To date, to date, um, six years later, you see that we've also built solid intellectual capital, solid intellectual capital to sustain the industry. We've done three successful full maintenance shutdowns. It's, it's just like taking your car and taking it apart and reassembling, and then it runs. That is no small feat. We've done three of those. And then that is also very significant. And no loss time to injury at the plant. Recently there was a car accident. But operations of the plant, we're talking about millions of man hours with no loss time to injury. We've had people come from near and far, some from Switzerland, Italy, to come and just take a look at our plant come and take a look at our plant, how neat it is, how well run it is. And everyone there is a Ghanaian. We are hoping that you know, other companies will probably take follow suit in that. So you see, I've always been saying this, that when Africans are given the opportunity, or if we're able to take our economies back, if we're able to take our resources back, if we're able to own what we produce, all right, Africa would be a power to reckon or to be reckoned with. Look at what's happening. Something that other countries were not able to do in 40 years and 50 years, Ghanaians, Ghanaians young engineers have been able to do that in the pace of three years, three years. Now, hundreds of Chinese engineers who were, I mean, sipping, who were taking, who were, I mean, robbing us of our limited resources. I mean, I don't blame these people. They are expatriates and it's pure business. If you don't have the expertise 
you don't have to let it sit there for nothing you just have to hide the expertise all right or the bring down some expertise from wherever to help run your system i don't have any problems with it all right but the fact that we are also human we can also create or we can also train people to be adequate enough to run our economy is something that we should never joke with when we discovered oil we trained a lot of people i mean we trained plenty of people in the country the government brought so many initiatives including this this indigenization policy to make sure that Ghanaians, all right take the leading role in the sector especially in terms of administration and also engineering all right but we've not seen all of it we've not been able to realize it in its entirety but the fact that we are saving the country three million dollars our young engineers are seeing the country three million dollars i've been able to disassemble and assemble the entire machine and make it work like you know people think that africans we are dumb all right i i i see i've been on social media for a while and i see crazy comments crazy comments sometimes i laugh over it other times it makes me sad all right because i have seen my people i've seen Ghanaians create marvelous stuff like if you think of professor ashil ashiti right the um, chief engineer of nasa not only him we have professor the chief one of the greatest mathematics in the united states i mean do even don't forget about ghana alone look at nigeria and other parts of africa where these people have migrated to other countries and using their skill to make greater impact on the country that is hosting them they should tell you that africans we are not stupid the opportunities are not there and it's sometimes frustrating especially where you have upskilled enough and there is no even job for you to do there's no avenue for you to practice your skill that alone is an enough disincentive all right or demotivation for you to look elsewhere it's not only it's not an african thing the whole world i mean people migrate from europe to us us to europe and i mean it's normal the problem is they always not talk about europeans migrating to us or us migrating to asia they, or uh, sorry the us migrating to asia and um europe and asians migrating to other parts of the country and even americans migrating to africa or europeans migrating to africa they only talk about africans migrating to europe europe and us and it's carefully done all right not only by white supremacists all right because i personally believe not all whites are supremacists i'm talking about this white supremacy and even our own black people because i see that in the comment section every time that some people who call themselves indigenous americans or whatsoever who feel that they have this special type of blackness or black superiority than the other black they think they are smarter all right you if you are smarter you don't have to complain to anybody that your fellow black who have migrated kilometers away is come to take your position all right that's the topic of another day please don't get me wrong i'm talking about some people who write in the comment section that africans are fleeing because we are dumb i see those comments every time i'm not talking about our african americans or african diaspora brothers you know we have the real one and we have the infidels i call them infidels we call them people who are being who are being used to infiltrate this whole black movement or black agenda to make sure that collectively we grow as a community and we together collectively we grow as community and, 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 and as black people where our race will be cherished or where our race will be respected where our race would also be seen as uh would not be seen as a race of inferiority but a race of equality that's what i'm talking about all right so we are capable and i want to tell that if you are an african if you're a black person if not for anything the fact that ghanian young engineers that the chinese had replaced a long time because they felt that the engineers were not capable enough to take over an, an industry to take over an industry in their own country for a longer time something that is that 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 took 50 years or 40 years for others to do these young engineers have been able to do it in three years and that if you're an african you should never consider your blackness you should not consider your race as inferior you should know that you are as good as you can be you can you are as good as you can make yourself to be know that the the, the the difference between you and any other race is just the skin color and skin color is nothing 
what the contest, the content in you, what is in your mind, what you can spill out, what you can absorb in and what you can produce from what you have absorbed in. I'm talking about knowledge and wisdom. It's all that matters. So guys, thanks for watching and I just want to encourage you and I want to commend the, the director, all right? The director of Ghana Gas for the good job. That's what should happen in Africa. So thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.